Hello, hello, and welcome once again to a Beatles podcast that we call Things We Said Today. And what makes this show kind of unique is that we focus mainly on what's happening in the Beatle world in terms of news. My name is Ken Michaels, known for my syndicated Beatles show called Every Little Thing, and I'm being joined by my co-host, the man who writes for Beatles Examiner and many other Examiner columns, Steve Marinucci. Hi, Steve. Hi, Ken. Hi, everybody. On today's show, we're going to be talking about a uh, relatively new release that came out on DVD. It's called Live Kisses, and this is made up of Paul's performance at the Capitol Building in uh, in Hollywood on February 9th this past year. And uh, it also was aired, actually, that particular evening when it happened. It was on the Internet Live. It was recently broadcast, edited down a bit on uh, PBS, on their channels, they broadcast it. And now it's come out on DVD in a nice package, uh, which also includes a booklet as well, which has an interview in there with Paul in print that uh, Elvis Costello did. But uh, we're going to talk about Live Kisses and get our take on it and just um, say how we feel about this particular release. So why don't we start with you, Steve, and just tell me some thoughts about this, uh, this new DVD. Well... Let me go back a little bit and say that when Live Kiss came out, I had some mixed feelings about what he had done. I thought that he kind of overreached a little bit with his voice. I thought that uh, it was great that what he had done, though, with the song, picking unusual songs and not well-known songs, uh, rather than do what Rod Stewart had done and pick the real obvious songs. I liked that part of it. But I think I, his voice sounded a little stretched. I guess is the is the way is the best way to talk about that. You're talking about kisses on the bottom, right? Okay. Yeah, I'm, that's why I said I'm going back a little bit uh-huh. just to just to talk about that. But li- live kisses, it happened the night of. It happened in the middle of the whole kisses on the bottom promotion. It was the same day as the Walk of Fame ceremony, which was a crazy, crazy afternoon because I was there. But Live Kiss is is just absolutely, it it is as relaxed as you'll ever see, Paul. It's the best realization of the whole Kisses on the Bottom idea. Wow. As relaxed as you'll ever see, Paul? I think think so. I think he was very, he was extraordinarily relaxed. He and the band worked together very well, and you you can see it on, on the air. Oh, I agree with you in that respect, but you're saying more relaxed than when he does his regular concerts? Oh, yeah, I think so. I do. I, th- I think so. Yeah, because I think in the... He's, uh, you know, in, in like, uh, for example, with the with the, the On the Run tours, uh, On the Run shows, he's, he's doing high energy there. I think he's... Uh, I mean, if you want to call relaxed being in control, that's one thing. You mean relaxed more in terms of the music? Relax more in terms of the music. I mean, the way he, the way he handled the whole situation, uh, taping live kisses and and just dealing with the session musicians and and being just very calm and and you know sedate and and uh, low key somewhat. Yeah. Um, he's not you know he, normally Paul's very kind of up tempo guy. He's not really here. I thought he was just. It was very. Very nicely done. It was very much of a change of pace. Hmm. And I thought he was, the whole thing is, is fantastic. And if you had any reservations about Kisses on the Bottom, Live Kisses really takes those away because it's just such a nice performance. Well, I agree with you about the relaxed part because I just felt like, you know, there are so many times when you see Paul in concert during his, his, his regular concerts and so much of what he said is kind of rehearsed but this was very spontaneous, off the cuff, whatever he had to say. Right. But what I happen to like about this particular performance, and even Elvis Costello commented about this in the interview he did with Paul in the booklet, is that it, it's not like it's a McCartney concert. It's more like you're sitting in on a recording session. It has that really intimate feel to it. Right. It was done at the Capitol building, and there were only some privileged people in the audience that got to see it. This was not a full concert you know, in terms of uh, having a lot of people watch Paul. Right. Only a, a few select people got to see this. But it really gives this feeling of intimacy. And just the fact that um, there's, well, there's so many things I want to bring up about this, but 
you really feel a sense of closeness when you watch this. You see all the interaction with all the musicians. The camera work in this particular DVD is just wonderful. And and the room that they're doing that in, you know, lends to that intimacy because um, when I went to the Walk of Fame ceremony for Ringo, there was a reception beforehand inside the Capitol Tower, and we got to go into one of those studios. And I don't know if the one that I was in was the one where where Live Kisses was done. It may have been. It may not have been. But it looks kind. Of, it, look, it looks kind of like it. Hmm. But in any event, the rooms aren't that big. You know, they're they're with. I mean, with the cameras and everything like that, there isn't a whole lot of room in there, and you've got all those mu- musicians. So it's you know it's a very there was a lot of there was a closeness that the video you know gets across right uh, very very much so and that really helps uh, and even it, it's not even apparent on the CD which is re- what's really you know what's really nice about this whole thing the CD has some intimacy to it I mean because Paul kind of keeps his voice down he doesn't he doesn't you know there's no screaming obviously. Right. on this but you see you really see it on the video you definitely see that there but one of the things that i especially love about this performance is that the camera's on paul a lot while he's singing so you get to see that he's really feeling the music as he's singing it mm-hmm. and i guess it, it makes you appreciate the performance and the song even more I mean, I I actually grew up on a lot of this music. My parents exposed me to a lot of pre-rock and roll. So to hear Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin material, Rat Pack, music from the 30s and 40s, I heard a lot of this stuff anyway. When you hear new arrangements of these songs, sometimes you end up appreciating these songs even more. And I really grew to love the CD of Kisses on the Bottom, but I love the CD more because of this performance. Yeah, you really, uh, I mean, you really do. Um, you know, like I said, there were some initial feelings that I had that Kisses really didn't go, uh, didn't work all, in all directions. There were some little shortcomings to Kisses because his voice didn't sound, sounded kind of strained or forced, but you don't see that on the video. And I don't know if it's a, it's the fact that Maybe he kind of listened to the CD and you know and felt that way or whatever. But he's he's very calm and and the whole thing just sounds wonderful. It really does. Well, he's using a different voice on much of the songs on Kisses on the Bottom and the performance too, mm-hmm. as he calls it his littler voice. And um, I think a lot of people, especially those of us who have grown up with Paul all these years and think he's one of the greatest singers, which I think he is, and He's so flexible, and he can do so many things with his voice, and at times his voice can be really powerful. Right. And you're hearing this very soft delivery coming out of him. Right. And I know that Paul has said that he didn't want to do a Vegas approach. He didn't want to sound like Sinatra. I'm really glad he didn't, too. Yeah, and even Diana Krall in in this DVD says that it was her suggestion to Paul to try to sound more like Fred Astaire, who Paul is a big fan of. Mm Mm-hmm. So he took that kind of an approach. There are certain songs on Kisses on the Bottom and and in this performance where he's in his more natural voice, like My Valentine, for that that matter, or um, Get Yourself Another Fool. And I love it when he's in that voice as well. But I've grown to really like this softer delivery. and I'm getting used to it. And watching this performance, like I said, it makes you appreciate the songs, it makes you appreciate the arrangements and what Paul brings to it, as well as all the other musicians. Mm-hmm. And that's you another thing that we shouldn't, we shouldn't uh, not bring up here, is the fact that all these musicians who are part of this are, are just top-notch. They're cream-of-the-crop people. Right. And, you know, when you've got that in your pocket there to go along with the music, and these are great songs, you know, and just the arrangements are so wonderful. The combination of all of that makes the DVD and and the CD for Kisses on the Bottom, a great experience for me. Right. You mentioned Diana Krall, and before Kisses came out, I picked up one of her albums, and her her style is very, very close 
to what Paul did here, and, and it's obvious that Tommy LaPuma, who produced Diana, took much of the ideas, and, and in fact, she even she even says, or Elvis Costello says in the booklet, that, you know, she gave him a lot of suggestions, and, and you could tell that, and Paul has acknowledged that, that it was her style, you know, that it was a lot of her style that went into Kisses, and, and but for anybody that, you know, is really interested in what he d- did here, you know, I suggest picking up a Diana Krall album or two and, and listening to her. I've become a big fan since, you know, you know in the past few months because of this, and uh, she's really something, and, you know, the style that Paul used for this um, is very much related to what Diana does. And And that's one of the great things about watching this DVD is the fact that you can not only gain an appreciation if you don't have one already for this music and from that era, but also the the musicians that played in the performance. I'll tell you one other thing that I like a lot about this show is that you get the feeling of it being so real. There's a, a moment in there when Paul does My Very Good Friend the Milkman, and at the very beginning he screws up a lot on the whistling Right, and if you watch the the live broadcast as it went out on the internet, it was kind of surprising, you know, to see that because you never see Paul really screw up. But it reminded me very much of when he was on MTV's Unplugged, and he messed up. We can work it out, mm-hmm. and had to go back and stutter all over again. But I like that aspect of it. They kept that in the DVD. Yeah, it's a, it's just such a it's really such a wonderful performance, and he really took off with that. With the idea, and they really, rather than just, I I don't know how to say it. They they took what they did with kisses on the bottom, and they made it better. I guess that's probably the best way to put it. But they mm. really did, and it and I and actually, you know, the uh, the thought that this is kisses on the bottom, just unadulterated live, may not on face value sound good. But the way they pulled it off in the DVD is just fantastic. It really is. Right. Well, I like the format that was presented here because I don't know about you, Steve, but I, I've been kind of turned off to a lot of concert DVDs. And Paul has done this himself where the songs are interrupted. you got people being interviewed in the middle of a song. Mm-hmm. But they don't do that on here. You get a lot of interviews with the musicians who are involved with this concert as well as the CD. But it's always in between songs. So right. the songs are kept intact. They don't step over the songs, and I like that aspect a lot. There's been a lot of criticism for the DVDs, not only for the the interruptions, but the you know the audience, you know the uh, using, focusing on so much on the audience, which of course there is none here. But yeah, that's you know it, that is a nice change. That is a, a very nice change. Hmm. Some of the things that I found really interesting in these interviews, I thought were kind of insightful. Uh, Diana Krall saying that uh, she doesn't think Paul is aware of how good he is at interpreting this music. And um, also Tommy LaPuma said that he felt from listening to the Beatles music that Paul kind of had a sense of understanding the song structure of what it was like in the pre-rock days Mm -hmm. and in understanding these standards. He kind of felt that when he heard the music of the Beatles back then. Well, I, you know, I been wondering from the beginning whether or not he's going to do another one of these and i think it's becoming increasingly clear that he will well i'm hoping that he does <laughs> i think he, i think he will because usually if he you can kind of get indications if he decides not to do that because he'll usually kind of disparage something or he'll say something there'll be some negative implications about something and he hasn't done that with this at all he's been very very up but very, very pro uh, all the way through on this. And um, and I would not be at all surprised if he decides to do this again. Well, if you watch, there's an interview in there, which leaked out on the Internet fairly early when Kisses on the Bottom came out. It's with Paul and Tommy LaPuma. Mm-hmm. And at the very end of that interview, he kind of hints that he's preparing for another one. Of course, he hasn't said anything about it since, about working on another one. And he won't. He, he He'll keep it... I mean, he's got so many other things working anyway. I mean, he doesn't need to to do that. But, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. I really wouldn't. But I get the feeling that he really enjoyed this experience. Yeah, I I do, too. And um, 
I mean, he talks about it. The Tommy LaPume uh, segment really kind of focuses on how much he enjoyed it, and it goes actually goes back to the roots of how they, you know, how this whole thing came about. And um, yeah, he he definitely did enjoy it. And I mean, it's something he should have done a long time ago. Agreed. And <laughs> a long time ago. And it's something that he could have done differently. Um, that he or the they might have done differently a long time ago had not Rod Stewart done what what Rod Stewart did. Hmm. The nice thing about about ki- the whole kisses on the bottom thing, both the CD and the DVD, is it's not the embarrassment that Rod Stewart's Great American Songbook is. Whoa, Steve! <laughs> oh, I got no. I I I am a big fan. Let, let, let me let, let's. I am a big fan of Rod Stewart's. I so I saw the faces several times in concert, and I thought they were just absolutely fantastic. But I cannot listen to Great American Songbook uh, without cringing. Uh, it, he really and and then to have him this Christmas do a Christmas album on top of that, I just that just doesn't make it for me. Well, I got to tell you. I don't know if I'm cringing when I listen to Rod Stewart do this, but I just don't think that his voice sounds comfortable doing this. It doesn't sound natural to me, but we're both wrong because, hey, (laughs) all these albums that he's made of standards have been amongst the biggest sellers of his career. So there are a lot of people out there that would disagree with us. Oh, yeah. But there is something I want to touch upon here because I just said... The comment that Tommy LaPuma made about feeling that when he listened to the Beatles that Paul had this sense of structure, song structure. Mm-hmm. Um, when Kisses on the Bottom came out, if you read the book that came with the CD, he was talking about how certain Beatles songs had introductions to them that were separate from the rest of the song. And that's something that you'll find a lot in standards. Like in Do You Want to Know a Secret? The very beginning of that song, You'll never know how much I really love you. That part, that's never repeated in the rest of the song. Right. And that's the kind of thing that you'll find in these songs, and you'll hear it in a song like Bye Bye Blackbird. You know, if you listen to Paul's version of that, that that introduction is nowhere in the rest of the song. Yeah. So Paul was aware of this while the Beatles were recording these songs. Same thing with Here, There, and Everywhere. So that's why it's kind of important when you're studying Beatle history to understand all the different influences the Beatles went through. And it went far beyond just the rock and roll. We could do several hours on Beatle influences and the wide range of, of influences that they, they had. And we're not talk, just talking the obvious ones like Carl Perkins and Little Richard and the right. Everly Brothers. I mean, there's, just, there's an astounding range of influences that, uh, that captured... Uh, you know, that the Beatles were influenced by, and it's just kind of amazing. Yeah, and I know that someone like yourself and many Beatle fans who are listening right now, some of you actually go a step further and want to hear the originals of songs the Beatles covered, and there are collections that have come out on that. Right. I, because of this collection, want to go back and hear the original artists doing all these songs that were on Kisses on the Bottom. And one of the luxuries that we have now with the Internet, you can go on YouTube and, and practically hear all the originals just to sample them yourself, right? If, if you're not I, familiar with them, yeah, I I pick one of the things that this album made me do was pick up a Fats Waller set, and I really really liked listening to him uh-huh. quite a bit. And he's fan, he's really fantastic, and he's somebody that you know has gotten a lot of critical praise over the years, and and it, there's a good reason why. I mean, his stuff is really fantastic. Mm. A few other things that I wanted to bring up of why I like this DVD. Mm-hmm. Uh, first of all, it was done in the Capitol building, and that, that building has so much history to it, and they kind of showcase that a lot. And everybody, yeah. everybody who plays on, uh, in, in the concert, they all have this amazing, deep respect for the history of what happened in that building. Right, and I, having been in the building and having been around that building, it's one of my favorite places in L.A., I don't want to sound critical, but I wish there had been a little more of it in there. But that said, it's just, it, it really is. It's a fantastic building. And if you're in L.A., you have to go by and see that building. Uh, it's just, it's absolutely, it's, even if you don't go down to right in front of the building, you know, just driving by, 
through Hollywood. Um, you have to see that building. It's it's absolutely gorgeous. Do you know if they give tours of the studios at all? You know, I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. I I, I mean, I, like I said, I've been in there a couple of times on uh, for various reasons, but I don't know if they give tours. Right. Well, not only do the musicians have this incredible respect for the Capitol building, but um, they even mentioned that the equipment that was used, some of the equipment there, was designed by Les Paul. It's the same equipment from right. years gone by. Mm -hmm. And when you hear someone like Paul McCartney say, I'm singing on the same micro the microphone that Nat King Cole used, it gives him shivers. I mean, you, know, you realize how human he is. And there are some I, nice I, pictures in the DVD too of, the, of some of the equipment. And, yeah, uh, and uh, yeah, there's uh, the one picture of the, the old microphone there that looks really, really cool. And just you know, just looking around that building and and you know, walking in, you know, being in some of the rooms, you just kind of get a sense of, wow, this is astounding. Hmm. You know? And I also love the fact that uh, before each song, they actually show you the original record. Right. Uh, the artist, the label, the original label that it was on. Yeah. So it really adds a bit of class to this special. Right. I love that fact. Yeah. And um, also, uh, during the song Home, I don't know if you noticed this, but they actually showed some photos of Paul with his family during his early years, which was a nice touch. And it mm -hmm. didn't interfere with the song and the performance. Right. So it was all very well done. And like I said before, I love the camera work here. And I can't say enough about it because there must have been lots of cameras going on at the same time. And it just seems like every time there was a solo from any particular musician, the camera zeroed in on it at that moment. So For the sure. cameraman knew enough to be filming certain musicians at, at certain points in, in the songs. If you're listening to It's Only a Paper Moon, there's a violin solo, camera's right on it. Right. You know, that kind of thing. There's great angles that you see in there, like Diana Krall at the piano. You see her hands on the piano, and Paul's right behind her singing. I love that. And there's some great photos in the, in the booklet uh, taken by M.J. Kim, um, who's Paul's photographer. And they were, the pictures are just gorgeous of the whole, you know, the whole studio session. They're mm. really nice. Right. Yeah. I also like uh, the interviews with Stevie Wonder and Eric Clapton. As a matter of fact, speaking of Eric Clapton, if you read the interview that Elvis Costello did with Paul, he actually says in there, because Eric in this special says that Paul owes him one, mm -hmm. and uh, Paul does admit that he's playing bass on an Eric Clapton song for, I guess, what will be his next album. So, you know, it's nice to know that, and that's there in the interview. Right. What did you think of the bonus features? On the on the DVD, I like them. I don't know how much I'll watch them over and over again. Uh, it's nice to see the videos that were made for my Valentine. There's one with just Natalie Portman, one with just Johnny Depp, and the one that was shown on TV, very rarely shown on TV, but it's with the two of them. Right, and I think actually that's the best one. Um, the others are the others are okay, but I think the the one with the two of them is is the best. Right. I like watching the making of the video. Mm -hmm. I see that as well. And I like the interview with Paul and Tommy LaPuma. Yeah. I think it's, it's a really good interview. It's, it's just too short. <laughs> I wish it went on a bit longer. Right. But uh, no, this, this entire package was just very well put together. And, um, you know, I can't say enough about it. This is the kind of thing that I will watch over and over, the performance of this show. There's as opposed to some of his other DVDs that you kind of watch once and put away mm, like um, Paul is live <laughs> well I'm, I'm thinking for example the love we make which I did not I was not real pleased with I didn't think love we make was that good mm. I thought I, this is much better this is much this is something I will watch a lot more than that it was done just right you know it there's was. nothing that I would change about this you get a lot for your money and I do like the booklet and I like the fact that it's Elvis Costello interviewing Paul because it's a different feeling when it's a colleague and a, a fellow musician and someone that has actually worked with Paul and written with Paul than a journalist interviewing him. Right. And, 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 and in fact, Elvis makes reference to the fact that they work together. Hmm. And that was kind of cool. 
And also, we should mention that Elvis has a deep appreciation, not just for Paul's history, but for this music, too. Right. And the fact that his own wife is on the recordings here. Well, that, yeah, that, that kind of helps. <laughs> and he, he, mentioned, he mentions that a couple of times. Right. So, yeah, that's, that, um, that, help, that helps a lot. We should also say that Just Released on iTunes is a new collection, and it's called Complete Kisses. And uh, what this is is basically all the audio that's been released and strictly the audio. So it's all the songs from the CD of Kisses on the Bottom. It's all the songs from the performance at the Capitol Building. And then there's all the bonus tracks that have been released. And there are four in total. You want to talk about them just briefly? You know, one thing that did not come out in the original publicity for this is that the Christmas song, version of the Christmas song on... Complete Kisses is not the same one on the Holiday Rules compilation that came out a month ago. Right. There's a slight difference. There's a difference in the introduction on both. Right. Now, just for everyone that doesn't know, there was a compilation that came out called Holiday's Rule, which is from the Concord Music Group, and Paul McCartney's on it with the the Christmas song. The Shins cover Wonderful Christmas Time, and it's really a very good collection. Rufus Wainwright's on there. A lot of really good people. And... The version of the Christmas song that's on Complete Kisses is different from the one that's on Holiday's Rule in that Holiday's Rule, there was a guitar intro, and on Complete Kisses, there are strings that introduce the song. Mm -hmm. And you can buy that and the Johnny Mandel version of My Valentine, which is also exclusive to Complete Kisses. You can buy those separately. You don't have to buy the whole thing. The only thing you won't get is the Complete Kisses leaflet, which there is, a, there is a CD leaflet, a PDF CD leaflet that comes with the entire package. And also, just to explain a little bit further, there was an earlier version, an earlier arrangement of My Valentine done by Johnny Mandel, who's a great arranger now in his upper 80s, mm-hmm. and, and songwriter, and uh, that's included on Complete Kisses. Right. And some people like that version better than the one that's on the album. I, I, ex- <laughs> I actually do. I, I think it's a much better version myself. Yeah, but the great thing about Complete Kisses is the entire collection, 31 tracks, is thirteen ninety nine, Which is really, yeah, that's really impressive. I know a lot of people, uh, I, when I wrote about it, a lot of people complained about uh, having to pay again, and, and I can understand that, and certainly that's, you know, there's an argument to be made there, but for thirteen ninety nine for thirty one tracks, that's a pretty good deal. Right. And you get everything you get everything all at once. You get all you get the entire live you know, all thirteen live tracks in one spot, um, plus the C D. So, I mean it's I you know, I initially kind of frowned upon it, but I, I, I have to say that it's not nearly as bad as I <laughs> I have I, I've softened my, my criticism a little bit, I think. Well, it gets very complicated with every release. If you want to get a particular song, there's only one way to get it. It's a bonus track here. There's a bonus track you can get somewhere else. And, it, you know, it gets very frustrating. You just want everything to be, you want everything that's there to be released all at once, if you can. Right. You know, right. But um, if, you're, if you haven't bought Kisses on the Bottom and you don't mind buying everything as a download... The way to go is with Complete Kisses, because you'll get everything audio-wise. And then right. as far as video, definitely, definitely get Live Kisses. Right. So before we go, I know that we just had a winner in our contest for the brand new Beatles Scrabble game. We, we have a winner. It's Bill Stimmel. And Bill, if you're out there, I'm not going to say where he is, but uh, Bill, if you're out there listening, you won, and you, we'll be contacting you. All right, Bill. Good to hear from you. And we want to encourage all of you to write to us here at Things We Said Today with any comments or suggestions that you have for the show, maybe some topics that you want us to cover that's in the news of late. Okay? And the way to write to us, we have our own email address, which is Things We Said Today Radio Show at gmail.com. Right. And hopefully we'll uh, write back to you. And uh, we just, we, we love to get any feedback that we can here for the show. We have our own uh, Facebook page at Things We Said Today. I have one for uh, Ken Michaels, and Steve has his own. You can find me on examiner.com. Um, search for me at, under Beatles Examiner. Actually, search for me under Ringo Starr Examiner. Search for me under George Harrison Examiner. Search for me under Vintage Rock and Roll Examiner. 
and I'm under all of those titles. He's more. under about 99% of all the examiner columns that are out there. So. You would think so. <laughs> you would think so. Wow. And um, I'm on Twitter under my own name. So if, you're, if you want to say hello to me there, you can do that. Um, I'm out there. Let's put it that way. Mm-hmm. And if anyone wants to get in touch with me, they can write to me at my email address, my own email address, which is the name of my radio show, Every Little Thing, at att.net. You can also check out my website, which is kenmichaelsradio.com. There are lots of interviews on the website that you'll find on the homepage of people connected to the Beatles. And there's uh, trivia and games that I post every single week with great prizes that I give away as well, like the Beatles Scrabble game. So... uh, Keep all that in mind, and I'd love to to hear from you on my website and through my email and any other way that you want to get in touch with us. That's right. So for Things We Said Today, I'm Ken Michaels. I'm Steve Marinucci. Saying thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you next time.